So number 16 then from the 2018 SQA Advanced Tire Mathematics of Mechanics. Eight mark question here in three parts. A wordy question you need to read. But noticing the first part in A says sketch a velocity time graph. So this initial part must just be describing what you're going to be putting into this for two marks. Well, what does it say? Two runners are taking part in a railway race, hand over the baton, running in the same straight line. Just call that speed then, since it's only got one direction. Runner P is running at a constant speed of 12. When he decelerates at 4 in preparation, at which point he must be travelling at 9. He continues the same way as it comes to race. So I've got a picture of P. Q. Q takes the baton three seconds after starting running. So wherever that baton change was, Q has to start back here. With constant acceleration until you get to nine. And then at that point, continues accelerating up to 12. Well, picture seems fairly straightforward then. Now Q could start anywhere. May as well just start Q here. Because the calculations before it won't matter. So Q accelerates up to 9 with the baton change, carries on, I'll just carry on in a straight line, and then goes off at 12. P was coming in at 12, and then decelerates. So that's where the baton change takes place. Now the baton change takes place at 9 metres per second, and they were coming in and going out at 12 metres per second, and the took place three seconds after Q starts running. Now, another thing I suppose, and now it says annotate. Well, I suppose you should really put the units in here. So that times in seconds, and that V's in metres per second. Now, I don't know if I need these dotted lines, I'll just indicate exactly that baton change is there. Maybe you should say that. That point refers to the baton change. That point there is where Q starts. And this point here, because those are the only relevant points, those three points, is where P decelerates. I mean, that should be it then. There was two marks for this. There was one for showing these two graphs, and there was one for annotating. But then I noticed in the marking scheme it doesn't actually annotate by description. It only puts the numbers in. I would have thought annotate means to explain the parts. So I'm putting that down. Right. Two. For how many seconds has P decelerated? Now, the handy thing about a velocity time graph is the distance travelled is the area under the graph. But another thing to realise is it's a velocity time graph. Those aren't the actual paths followed by the runners. That doesn't show their locations in any way. It just simply shows their speeds at a certain time but it will give the distance travelled by the individual parts, no matter where those distances took place. Anyway, now I've lost the track. Two. How many seconds has P decelerated? So in other words, what's this time interval in here? Well, it's just a constant deceleration. So, V equals U plus AT. So we know all the parts apart from T, because it told you that it was 4 metres per second for the deceleration. So final velocity, 9. Initial velocity, 12. Deceleration, so minus 4 T. Rearranging that, take the 12 across, negative 3. Divide by negative 4, that's 3 quarters of a second. Or if you like, 0 0.75 seconds. That's worth a mark. Now part B. At the point where the baton is exchanged, Q is 0.8 metres ahead of P. Because of course they wouldn't be exactly on top of each other because they're coming along and their bodies would be apart as they pass it. How far is P behind Q when Q starts? So I'll just take a little note of that. If that's P, then that's Q. At the baton change, that's 0.8 of a metre. Well, the whole point about drawing a velocity time graph is that you can get the distances by the areas under the graphs. So how far did Q travel 
to the baton change time, it's the area under the blue line, that triangle. How far did P travel? It's the area under this particular quadrilateral, which you can think of as made up of however many parts you like. But the area under that one, and the distance between them, apart from this little extra offset here, will be the difference in those areas. Or you could just say it's the area of this quadrilateral here, contained between the blue, the green, the blue, and the vertical line, whichever way you like. And of course, you're perfectly free just to use the standard equations because they would give the same results, obviously. But since they've said use a velocity time graph, I think we'll go for areas. So what we start with, the simplest one, so Q. What's the distance travelled with Q by Q? So I'll call that DQ. That'll be the area under the time velocity time graph. For Q, it's a triangle. A half base times height. A half of 3 times 9. So that's going to be a half of 27, 13.5 metres. That's worth a mark. What about the distance travelled by P? Well, now you've got to decide how you're going to split that quadrilateral up. The area under the green lines. You could make it bottom rectangle with a trapezium on top. There's all sorts of ways, any way you like. But I think I'll do it as a big rectangle minus a triangle at the top, since it's got to be made of two parts anyway. So that's going to be, if you take it as a big rectangle, that will be 3 times 12 minus the triangle at the top, because I know that this distance here, or rather that time interval is 3 quarters. If I want that, that's 2 point, what's it called, 2 and a quarter? That's 2 and a quarter. So the base of that triangle is 3 quarters. The height of that triangle is 12. Take away 9 is 3. Now doing that, whoops, getting confused there, is worth a mark just for showing the construction, the geometrical construction of how you're working out, which bits you're using. Now it's just a case of what does that come to. You could type it in, but there's not an awful lot here. You've got 36 take away 9 eighths. So let's take away 2 and put back 7 eighths. 34 and 7 eighths. And 7 eighths is 5, 8, 7, 5. That's worth a mark. Then, knowing those two distances, how far behind was P when Q started to run? We have to remember this offset. Subtracting those distances, or finding that area between the blue and the green there, tells you how far behind P would be if they were coincident. So you're subtracting it, but there's displacement. P was only here when the baton change took place. So those 34.8 metres goes back from that, which means the distance you're looking for is 34.875 plus the 0.8, that extra displacement back because P was that distance behind Q, minus the distance that Q ran. And when you put that lot together, you're going to get 21 and then that's plus 0.3 more than that, so 21, 22.175 metres. That was the last mark, but the actual mark before that was for doing correctly applying this offset of 0.8, so not just simply subtracting them, but realising there was an extra offset back in the distances of 0.8. But of course, you don't actually have to do that. You could have just used your equations. So you could have said simply this. For Q, what was the distance travelled? Well, it was a distance at acceleration. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared. One of the things you have to work out the acceleration here. Started at zero plus a half of, and I'll have to work out the acceleration. So the acceleration will be the speed achieved divided by the time taken, so that's 3 metres per second squared. A half times 3 times 3 squared, which is the same thing, of course. A half of 27, so that's 13.5. You could have done the same for P, only in P if you were just looking at this. Because the other thing about a velocity time graph is it lets you visualise the situation. So P, the distance P travels is made up of two stages. There's a stage at constant velocity, so that'll just be, I'll call that distance one, that'll just be S equals UT. So that'll be 12 times, and taking that three quarters away is 12 times two and a quarter. And two and a quarter, because that's another three onto that, is 27 metres. There's S2, 
the distance travelled during the deceleration, now you need the whole lot, ut plus a half at squared. So that will be 12 times, but that only happened for three quarters of a second, minus a half of, and you knew that acceleration with deceleration was four, times three quarters squared. That's a bit messy, but you can put it in your calculator, I suppose. Well, that part's nine, and that's nine over, and it'll just be four with that four cancelling out one of them. So that's nine eighths. So that means that part's going to be seven and seven eighths, which gives you altogether 34 and seven eighths metres, which of course is what you had before. That would have been made up of two marks. I suppose it would be one for each of the parts. And then after that, you put them together the same way as before. So using the velocity time graph saved you doing these extra calculations here. Notice in particular you didn't need to know this acceleration here for A because it was just the area under the graph.